Hi guys, <clears throat> I pray that you are well. This is uh, this week's life group video and we are in Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26. Last week we looked at the first two verses of Romans 3 verse 21 and 22 and today we're going to look at the next two verses. Um, really we are, like we said, we come here to the heart of the gospel. We come to the center of the whole Bible. We come to a place where we've been hearing quite a a dreadful picture of human beings who are guilty, cannot save themselves under God's wrath, under God's judgment. Now we come to a section where we move from sin and death to life and salvation, from um, being under the wrath of God to receiving His grace from death to life. And so it's an amazing passage of Scripture, so tightly knitted that we're going to go through it slowly. So we are in our second installment today and we're going to look at how we put that to practice in our lives. As always, please listen to the first sermon. If you have your Bibles with you, then please read the whole passage, Romans chapter 3, 21 to 26. You may read that now. Awesome. Now that you've read that passage of Scripture, like I said last week, we looked at how uh, this righteousness from God is um, <clears throat> that the, it's apart from the law, but the law and the prophets testify to it. And this week, we're just going to look at the next statement. It says, for there is no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by God's grace as a gift. Now, these are power, powerful statements that we have here. And we come to this thing of obviously, again, Paul is pressing down on this point that all have sinned and have missed God's holy mark. And so they've sinned uh, against God and deserve his punishment. And that is where we have sinned, uh, have a sinful nature in the past under Adam has been inherited by us. And because of that sinful nature, we do sinful things. And then afterwards, we fall short of the glory of God. In other words, because that sin has come in and in our lives marred the image of God in our lives for which we were created, we no longer display God's glory in the way that would normally have been without sin. And so this interruption of our relationship with God based on sin um, shows that we fall short of God's glory. We fall short of it. We no longer reflect His glory in beautiful ways. In fact, we choose other things to glory in, which is what leads to idolatry. Things that are uh, we take as more valuable, uh, better than God Himself. And that makes us unrighteous. So that's that first term about sin and what Paul is saying there, that it's for everybody, every person, every people group, apart from the saving work of Christ. Is, there's no distinction. Everybody is a sinner. And so by virtue of that, everybody needs salvation. Everybody needs God's grace and everybody needs the gospel. That's what he's clarifying there. But today we're going to look at that, these two things of being justified or the term justification and why that is important. And then we're going to look at how we are given that, that God's righteousness and being justified before God freely by God's grace. Just these two things we're going to look at, God's grace and justification. Now, justification is very, very important. It's the first time we see it here in the book of Romans. And I think what I'd like for you to, to, to think of in your mind is a courtroom scene. And a courtroom scene is quite important because Paul is giving pictures of salvation here, one of justification, which is in the context of a, of a, a courtroom scene. It's a legal forensic term. And then he will talk later or next week around redemption, which is more of something that happens in the marketplace, in the economy. And then thirdly, he's then going to talk about this term propitiation, which is seen more in the context of religious activity and pagan religious activity. And so he uses these three pictures to portray the salvation that we have when we put our trust in Jesus Christ. So today we're going to look at justification. And justification is simply a legal forensic term where we, we can see against us now we, are, we stand condemned and judged by God for our sin and we have no response. We are waiting punishment in a sense. If you look at us, we are guilty. We have an X over our head apart from the saving work of Christ. But in justification... When a sinner puts their trust in Jesus Christ to save them, it's an act of God that declares them righteous. They are acquitted. They are more than forgiven, more than pardoned. They are acquitted. Every charge for their sin has now been reversed. 
they no longer will be held accountable or how their sins will no longer be held against them for their sin. Now, this happens as a once off instantaneous thing that is initiated by God and not by the person themselves who's putting their trust in Jesus. And I think this is important. It's a once off thing. It happens in an instant and it's, it is permanent and irreversible that God declares someone righteous declares someone they are justified not guilty before God prior to their believing in Jesus Christ they were guilty and they were stood under God's wrath and they are awaiting condemnation condemnation rather and punishment for which they could do nothing to save themselves here God acts and intervenes by sending his son who saves us and when people respond in faith they are justified declared not guilty and I think this is important just for us to understand in our salvation, which will bring clarity to you and also to uh, those who maybe need to hear this for the first time. Justification um, must not be confused with a few other terms that we use in terms of salvation. The second term that I want to talk about is what we call regeneration or what you would normally know as being born again, being made spiritually alive, being given a new heart. This experience of being born again and being justified happen almost together instantaneously. They are two different things, but they happen at the same time. In justification, God acts and he declares a sinner righteous because of their trust in Jesus Christ. That happens in the mind of God. That's how he sees us. But what happens in regeneration is that when we hear the good news, the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts. We see and we are convicted of our sins and we see a need for Christ. And so what do we do? God in that moment takes out the heart of stone, gives us a heart of flesh, puts his spirit in us and we see our need of Christ. And then we turn to Christ, trust in him, turning away from our sins, repenting and believing in Jesus Christ. And we are declared righteous, justified all in an instant, all by God's work. And so for regeneration, you can read John 1, 12. You can read John 3, verse 3 to 8, where that's explained. And also you can read Titus chapter 3, how we are born again by the living and abiding work of God. We're born again by the work of the Spirit. We're born again from above uh, because of this work of the Spirit when we hear the good news. So that's justification and regeneration that happens in an instant when a person is convicted of their sin and they turn to Jesus and put their trust in him. That's what happens. And that's irreversible. It cannot be changed. Uh, it's, it's permanent. And God does it. It's initiated by God. What it mustn't be confused with is the process of sanctification. Now, this is where not when someone has been saved. This is now when someone is being saved. And in justification and in regeneration, we are saved from the penalty of sin. No longer will we have eternal condemnation and hell. But in sanctification, day by day, we are being made more and more like Jesus Christ in our hearts, in our words and in our deeds. And so that is being saved, being delivered from the power of sin daily. And then we have a future sense of our salvation, the fullness of our salvation, which is glorification. Those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved, where we will receive new resurrection bodies, imperishable we will be with God forever in a new heaven and a new earth. And we will be delivered forever from the presence of sin. There will be no sin anymore. So now we live in a process. If you've trusted in Jesus, day to day being sanctified. So you can only start the process of sanctification if you've been justified or have been born again. You can't do certain acts here to make you right with God. And this is so important. And all of this in the second point, is done freely by God's grace as a gift. This is what we need to understand. This was initiated by God the Father. He sends His Son, and the Son comes voluntarily, and this is God's gracious gift to us. He initiates it. He gets the glory for it. Man can never make any claim for their salvation. This is just a gracious, undeserved favor of God extended to sinners who do not deserve it. And this is the the glory of the gospel. It shows the character of God that he lovingly, and we can miss this graciously, we can miss this in Romans when we, when we gloss over this, we can miss this gracious, 
loving God, the Father who sends his son, who stoops down into man's sin and into man's mess and delivers them and saves them and grants them grace and awakens their heart to Christ and justifies them and sets them apart on a part of holiness in their lives. And this is the beauty of the gospel. And God gets the glory for this. So after I've said all of these things around being justified by faith, which is at the heart of the gospel, declared not guilty. Um, we are not made righteous. We are declared righteous. And then we become more and more holy as we do the process of sanctification. Here's a couple of things that I want you to think of in terms of application. Firstly, how does it feel that God has acted in this way in saving you? That it's not of you, but it's of him. What does it spark in you? What does that trigger in you? Maybe take that around. Because if this salvation is of God, he is the one that initiates, sends his son, dies on the cross. And you are called then to respond to him. Surely that response is not entitlement, not taking that for granted. Surely it's a sense of being thankful, being surrendered to God of worshiping him, of running to him, throwing ourselves at his mercy and trusting in him. Is that so in your life? Secondly, as a believer, sometimes we struggle with the concept of being justified and of being sanctified because sin is still, there's still indwelling sin in us. And sometimes as believers, we sin. And so we feel condemned again. We feel we need to trust God that that condemnation is turned to a conviction. The scripture tells us that there is no condemnation for those who are Christ Jesus. So alert, if you've, not, uh, if you've thought and had the view that you're not going to sin anymore because God has justified you. No, he's declared you righteous and now you're becoming who you are. And he's committed to make you more like Jesus. He's given you grace. He's given you the Holy Spirit. What you ought to do now is that by the same means by which you were justified, you trust in God. You live in the reality of the gospel with the Holy Spirit in you. God's empowering grace. And you repent of your sin. You put to death the misdeeds of the flesh by the Holy Spirit day to day. This is God's process of making you more like Jesus. So be quick to repent. Respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit for the sin in your life. And you will see how God uses that to make you more and more like Jesus. Be true and real in your repentance. And know that there shouldn't be patterns of unrepentant sin in your life. But actually as God leads you, you should respond to that. And don't live in guilt. Don't live in fear. If you are assured of the work of Christ to justify you, make you not guilty. And to regenerate you and make your life to him. That is the basis of your salvation. You don't live in fear from day to day as to whether you are saved or not. No, you have been justified. You are being saved and one day you live in the reality of that. I pray that that will bring assurance to you as a believer um, in your life from day to day and will want, cause you to want more of Christ. But more than just that assurance today, I pray that you would take this gospel. Doesn't it? Don't you glory in this to tell others, man, you did not deserve it. This is God's grace freely in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. You too can be justified by faith in Jesus. Would you share that message with those in your sphere of influence, in your home, at your workplace, with friends and family that you know that do not know Jesus? And I pray that as you look at these things practically, you will be blessed, encouraged. And again, you'll remember that the glories of the gospel never cease to amaze. May your discussions be fruitful, edifying and maturing. God bless you.